So good evening, um, everybody, and welcome back. This, it is very difficult to um, read and study St. John of the Cross for some of us who uh, really went through um, philosophical studies, but uh, philosophical studies which are not the, I would say, uh, the philosophia perennis, as we, we call it um, in the scholastic um, terms, uh, which is the Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas uh, philosophy. And uh, um, in general, the modern philosophies are all influenced in general, of course, uh, any generalization sometimes can be um, excessive. Um, they are influenced by Immanuel Kant. And Immanuel Kant, uh, um, I would say, main or essential uh, understanding, philosophical uh, or philosophical statement, is that the mind, the human mind, in its natural operation, cannot reach the being of anything that is observed or considered either physically considered or intellectually uh, considered as, as a being. Uh, why? Because this is considered beyond time and space, and therefore um, it is not at, at the reach of the human mind. This statement is, uh, to a great extent, a new uh, statement in the history of uh, philosophy, and it influences all the other philosophies after that. And as a consequence, the majority of us um, who live now, um, we are influenced either directly through our studies or indirectly by the, uh, all the different modern uh, philosophers and philosophies and options. And as I just said, they are majority of them are influenced by Immanuel Kant. And um, not all of them, but many of them. And uh, therefore, this creates a great difficulty. And I would say that the majority of people who study theology are not aware of this difficulty. Why? Because uh, we rarely uh, present the exact and uh, intimate relationship between the functioning of the mind in philosophy and the function the of the mind in theology under the light of faith uh, in theology and under the uh, natural light of, of reason. Uh, the influence is uh, simply direct in the sense that if my way of thinking, forma mentis, in, in philosophical way of thinking, um, um, goes in a certain direction or functions in a certain way, when then I will be uh, studying or addressing any uh, object of faith like Christ, the Trinity, the grace of God, uh, the church, and so forth, you name it, the functioning will be more or less the same. Here is the, um, the warning. And therefore, if my mind in its natural functioning in philosophy or um, being influenced directly or indirectly by, uh, by, by um, the modern uh, way of thinking, um, when I will be put under the light of faith, I'll be functioning the same way. So in a sense, I'll be just addressing the experience, the phenomenon, but I won't be able to enter deep. I did mention that many times um, before uh, when, of course, trying to understand and explain um, uh, St. John of the Cross. Um, you notice in his way of working, one of the main qualities that he has is that he can see, so to speak, he can see with the light of a living faith what is happening in the spirit which for the modern mind is something simply impossible. You cannot do that because you're basing all your uh, perception on something that belongs to space and time. 
So therefore, anything that is beyond space and time, which we call classically metaphysics in philosophy, um, and, um, finds a great difficulty, uh, especially in, in, in theology. Uh, like, for instance, you would very easily accept the humanity or the human nature of Jesus, but you would struggle enormously with his divine nature, with the um, unique person, the, the second person of the Trinity incarnate, and so forth. So you would find very difficult to um, um, see Jesus as faith normally uh, should be uh, seeing him. As a consequence, you will unconsciously or consciously be uh, having, um, um, uh, I would say, truth that you'd be dealing with that are not the real truth of our faith. Like, for instance, you will ask, um, did uh, Jesus, what's Jesus, um, uh, did he have in his human nature any perception of his divine nature? Um, how was he united to his divine nature? Were, were, there, uh, were there any communication between them? Um, uh, how this, the, does this uh, um, occur? Did this occur? Um, how was he able to know about himself um, when he grew as a human being and so forth? And you end up, when you see some um, many uh, uh, theological uh, books or, or studies uh, on these such on, on these subjects, you will find that um, the authors, theologians, um, give give to uh, Jesus uh, things that um, uh, that um, are much less than what we give to the saints when what we accept coming from the saints, like from their spiritual experience, which is a bit surprising and sad. Um, you know, how can you be a theologian if if you have no knowledge of even how the saints live their life? So how, why do you project your thoughts on, on Christ and you don't even dare just study a little bit the saints in order to give Jesus a little bit more than the saints and not a little bit less than the saints and so forth. So the list is very long, uh, the list of this I would say incapacity to reach the being itself, the supernatural being in the case of theology or spiritual theology, the action of the Holy Spirit, this radical incapacity, basing all your knowledge and um, analysis on what is perceived has tragic consequences to the point that personally, and this is only me talking here, but you know, I'm entitled to my opinion. Um, I think the majority of the readers today continue to function uh, this way, the readers of uh, St. John of the Cross, to the point that, in fact, we're not reading St. John of the Cross. We are reading what we would like to hear, but we're not reading what he is trying to say. Hence, uh, th this course. Uh, so, I just close this parenthesis, but I think that it's important for whoever is wondering, um, what could be the differences in the way of reading uh, St. John of the Cross? Well, here are, this is one of the major uh, differences, but it belongs, unfortunately, to, um, not in everybody, but in the majority, uh, to a sad incapacity to just function function in, in the natural way uh, in philosophy and therefore in a, in a proper way in theology and also in spiritual theology, which is uh, deeper than just uh, normal, uh, the normal light of faith. It needs deeper light than the, the normal light of faith. So do you have any questions on, on this subject before I move on to uh, back again to St. John of the Cross? This observation, I could have uh, offered it in the beginning of the course, uh, but, you know, it came today because it's... Um, I discussed it recently uh, with a Carmelite. Um, um, he confirmed uh, this position. Uh, it's this is how at least some some see it. You don't have to see it this way. It's your it's your uh, you you decide what you want to do in life. But this is how um, some see it, and I think it's important to um, it's an eye opener. I would say yes. Please go ahead. Hi, Jean. Hi. Um, 
am I right in understanding that what you're saying is that in order to read in Jonah the Cross correctly, then it would be very helpful to have a background in, say, Aristotelian metaphysics and St. Thomas Aquinas or these kind of this sort of scholastic philosophy. Um, you're right. Yes, this is what I meant to say. But you need to be careful also because St. Thomas Aquinas is uh, in in different places today in the church can be still a uh, very con uh, controversial. And I would like to add also that it's not because somebody studied St. Thomas Aquinas that that he or she automatically understands what I meant today in the sense like that he was he or she was able to go back to the natural functioning of the mind etc like teaching Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas could be a little bit more like imparting some knowledge some references history of and that's it but uh, initiating a person into how to philosophize how to observe something how to perceive the being this requires a professor of a certain uh, quality uh, and by quality is this is the experience uh, so it's not just a knowledge of philosophy and comparative philosophy that's I'm, I'm not interested by that but it's i would say living the philosophy the aristotle uh, Aristotle um, philosophy and Thomas Aquinas and I have to confess having I had to go through it many years ago um, it wasn't obvious at, at all I could see that some were seeing something were experiencing something I wasn't yet um, seeing it or experiencing it and it was very puzzling um, it, it seemed something very easy uh, but in the same right. time, you have books written on it, so it looks a bit complicated. How? Why do you? Why is it in the same time uh, the easy uh, uh, operations of the mind, and in the same time uh, we have to write so many books about it? So uh, until you meet somebody who takes time, sit down with you, and help you a little bit, or you meet another person also who would you find they are saying the same thing. So in a way, you'll meet people who are seeing and who will help you just open your eyes. Um, so I, I met, uh, I saw some teaching of Thomas Aquinas. I'm not talking about anybody uh, in specific right now, but I, I had the opportunity in my uh, uh, career, uh, my life, um, <clears throat> to see people who study Thomas Aquinas. But... Um, you know, it is extremely simple what I try to convey, what is normally conveyed in, in, in a proper uh, uh, scholastic philosophy. Um, and uh, you find that it's just they learned it. They had to go through, through the exam, but they didn't perceive. So it's like you, you, you didn't have the eyes to see it or you weren't helped to just become aware that in fact it's like breathing are you are you thinking that you are breathing are you or are you deciding that you have to breathe right now no you are breathing it's the same thing the mind functions in a certain way so the the role and the function of philosophy is to bring us back to that it's an experience and often philosophy today is taught as a history of philosophy so we go through all different schools of philosophy. Sorry for if my reply is a bit long and you, you know maybe part of it, but I think it's important to understand that it's not automatic. I studied Thomas Aquinas, therefore I understand. No, you, 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 I'm not saying about you or others, but I'm saying in general, it's not automatic. It's, um, it's an art, it's an, in, it's an initiation, it's an introduction to an experience. So the teaching is not a history of, but it's look how it works. It's like you enter in a lab and you say that you have a chemical experience or a physics uh, experience and you see, you put the laser beam and, and so forth. You see, you, you are doing it. You can see how it works. Somebody taught you how it works. Okay. Sorry for the long uh, answer. So yes, what, this is what I meant, but it's not automatic. What do you mean by it? You keep saying it. It being what? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. You keep saying seeing it or oh the the being the being of of what you are observing uh like for instance you you have a you say you have a flower in front of you um you, you look at the flower uh 
you can look at the flower in, in many different ways. You can look at it in a poetic way, so you can write a poem about it. You can look at it as a biologist or somebody who studied the genes and so forth, and you can analyze it under a microscope and classify, also a botanist, you can classify the flower and so forth. You can look at the flower in a philosophical way, the philosophy I'm talking about, which is you just stare at the, the flower, you see the exterior manifestation of the flower, the color, the shape, etc. But in the same time, your mind becomes aware that you are seeing the, um, I would say, the being of this flower, as if this flower is an individual, it's, it's, it's an individual being in front of you. So when I say being, it's not the external presentation of or manifestation of the flower, but it's the core. So the mind, the natural functioning of the mind reaches that point. If you are taught uh, this way, you reach that point or you become aware that you are in front of that. Like two people who love each other, they, they can be in silence, one in front of the other, but they are in the presence of the other. This is a very natural attitude. So you are um, grasping, I would say, apprehending, uh, not in the modern meaning of uh, to apprehend, but in the uh, old meaning of the apprehend, which is grasping uh, the being of this person. You are in front of a being. So you can describe the person, but in fact, what you are grasping is something is more total, more complete, and in the same time, it's not visible as the manifestations or the presentation of the person is. So this operation is extremely simple. What I just said is extremely simple. Sometimes it requires two courses just to understand what I just said. You see, so this is the it. The it is is the, the being okay. uh, 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 that is in front of you. Now you have in front of you a person or a flower, but you can have God himself. You can have the grace of God. And therefore... The functioning of the mind will have to be elevated, but by the supernatural light of faith and allow you then to apprehend, which is the old way of um, saying to, gra to grasp, this being that is, which is invisible. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not visible. The grace of God is not visible. So how can you study something that is not visible? So today the moderns will say, well, the experience. Uh, did Jesus have the experience, the consciousness, the perception, uh, you see? But beyond the experience, there is the, the grace of God is, is real. The Holy Spirit is real. But you don't see him physically, you know? Uh, so um, how do you function? It's much easier to function if you already trained yourself, you have been trained to see that now you it's like you you move it on to uh, a deeper level with the help of course of the grace of god i don't know if i'm explain i explain myself if if one is self aware of what is the what is happening if we practice uh, to be more self aware of what is happening within us would that not would that help do you think to be aware of like Mm, to be conscious of how one has developed over the years and the way that this In one the has been you have to reach the functioning you have to have somebody who teaches you how to uh, reach the function if you if we are talking about studying if mm -hmm. we're talking about serious studying of the text you need that um because you know you can you can try to describe it in different ways i think it's it's um it would help a lot the normal functioning the functioning needed in order to understand what he is saying because he's constantly talking about something that is in, or invisible you can't grasp it through experience anything that is happening deep inside of us when you talk about the grace of god when you talk about the holy spirit in his deep action in us, not in the exterior manifestation, in the deep action in us, which is what matters. This is why we say we live in faith. So when you say we live in faith, you are saying we live in not feeling. Hmm? Blessed the ones who believe and don't see. So you say I make an, I made an act of faith, which means I am uh, stating that there is a reality. I believe in it, but I don't see it. 
okay so we live in faith which means there is something but we don't we can't access it now if the mind is is trained in in as i said then mysteriously you can access it not like you are accessing it physically but accessing it thinking uh thought wise in a speculative way so you can talk about it you can analyze it you can ex explain what is happening which is a mystery it's like how can you do that if you if you don't see it well with the help of a deeper faith and with the help of a mind which has this normal functioning there you can you can do that the proof is what we are seeing with john of the cross he he is not um, um, telling us there is an experience you have to have it in order to have what i'm describing uh i'm talking experience like sensing feeling uh this or that no on the contrary he says you reach a point where uh, i want you to uh, to uh, not to be attached to anything created but despite all that something deeper will be functioning in you so how can he say something deeper is functioning in you without um um for a modern person it's 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 extremely difficult so how can you say that you you don't you, you how you base it on what there is nothing you can base it on uh, there is no proof of what you are saying you see what i'm trying to say so this is the difficulty where with john of the cross he talks a lot about things that are not uh, visible to the naked eye or to the naked mind the, the natural mind he's talking about the operations of god deep inside of us and then he talks about the effects he doesn't start by talking with by uh, with the effects hmm? about the effects he doesn't say uh, we have this this uh, maybe then this means that no he says god is doing this deep and the effect out that you might perceive is this or that or that but inside he's doing it this way but how dare you say that you are basing what you say on what give me a book that says that you see what i'm trying to say so his mind with the help of of a living faith of a, of a deep faith a profound faith can by the grace of god reach that area thinking wise not like grasping it with the hand uh, and talk about something that is occurring inside of us but it's not perceived this is why you 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 certainly heard me saying that be careful when you read a book if the author doesn't talk about the spirit well be careful because you are um, you are heading toward a, a a wall you're hitting a wall you will hit a wall in the end why because the spirit is this area he's talking about and this area you cannot grasp it it's impossible i mean the feelings, the consciousness, the perception, they cannot access this place. And he's talking all the time about this place. So either he's wrong and we are right, or th there is something that we need to know, we need to do in order to follow his way of accessing it. This is what I'm trying to say. So we read him in the end. We take what we want to take, which is more the, the perception, experience, and we we leave out what is in fact the core of what is happening, which is what is happening deep inside. You see, because what we want, yeah, the the modern person wants experience, wants to sense something, wants perception, consciousness. No, yeah. we want, we, and we start and we live in that world while he starts and lives in another world. Otherwise, it's impossible to have John of the Cross. All what he's teaching. Um, the cornerstone of it is what I'm explaining, that there is something deep inside, you see. So the modern mind has huge difficulty to understand John of the Cross. It's not just cultural difficulty. It's not just knowing uh, what this word means, etc. No, it's it's having the 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 apprehension, the 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 way we move toward uh, how our mind is moving toward what he's saying. Our mind struggles. To reach where to to move to the place where he is. You see what I'm trying to say. But you have similar things. I don't want to uh, to enter in the proper subject of the how the functioning, the natural function, and so forth. But you know, you have you have I would say natural meditation, and I insist a lot here. It's natural meditation. You know, when you sit, you you hear some, uh, you read some texts from the Eastern 
uh, philosophers, uh, you sit in front of a tree and you consider the tree and you start to, to love the tree or hug the tree and or be aware that the tree is there and 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 you can add, uh, I would say, um, a, a faith touch to to that and saying, okay, you can be grateful to God that he he, he created this tree and this tree is here. So what is it? It's a being of the tree. Uh, you are not worshiping the tree, of course. I hope, but. You, you acknowledge the existence of the tree, suddenly, suddenly, your mind become aware that the tree is here. Sometimes we live um, in a very uh, fast uh, um, pace, and we, 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 we don't take time to look around us and uh, sit down and consider this, this is the sun, this is the tree, this is a flower, this is the, the water, a river or something. We are just running, running, running. So when you sit down and consider them, you are very close to this, what I called initially this Aristotle and and uh, and Thomas Aquinas uh, way of uh, philosophy. Okay, so I I hope this parenthesis will will help some uh, who are watching the videos uh, to become aware of the difficulty and more so to understand the the reason why we have this difficulty because we our way of thinking our expectation, our intellectual expectations are rather on the side of the experience. You see, I want to know uh, uh, is what I'm feeling right or wrong? Uh, what does John of the Cross say about what I feel? Fine. But if you stop there and there is nothing beyond, the work of God deep in us is not perceived, perceived through the light of faith, a, a living, a deep light of faith, well, then, then the, the, we have a difficulty because you will take part of what he says, which is the phenomenon, the exterior part, and you will leave out uh, what I see, what I consider as being the core, because this is where he is, where he's, uh, his uh, point of view. No, When you say point of view, it means where are you on the mountain? This is the point of view. Where are you standing? Uh, to and uh, to to look at um, the um, the uh, landscape on the view, the view or, or whatever you see, okay. So what I what I just said is is tragic in fact because the um, this incapacity uh, is very much present in our culture, in our studies, in our way of dealing thing with uh, with everything intellectually and uh, okay. and uh, dealing with our faith. And um, it hinders our understanding of uh, our friend. Um, you spoke about uh, philosophy and how we, how our mind functions naturally, and after having been exposed to certain thinking. Um, and I was wondering, you know, for those maybe watching these classes, if you, if someone say recognizes that maybe they're under the influence of maybe modern thinking or they haven't been exposed to Aristotle or metaphysics or St. Thomas Aquinas and they feel this as a lack, what would you, you know, what would you tell them? I mean, how could, if they were interested and open to to make make up the lacun, let's just say, uh, what would you suggest, you know, for us to study or, or do in order to apprehend better, as you said? Yeah. Thank you for your question, uh, Marty. Um, yeah, it is a practical question, then what, what to do? As I said in the previous uh, lesson, you have sometimes even the teaching of Thomas Aquinas or Aristotle, and it is rather offered in a more under history uh, perspective. Um, hence the need to find somebody, I'm almost tempted to say somebody who sees and who can help you uh, when you open your eyes to see also or to be to be aware of um, how you do you naturally see or look at things? It's it's uh, to a certain extent a bit difficult to answer the question. There are uh, some faculties or places or institute which uh, still teach uh, Aristotle and the. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas philosophy. When I mention Thomas Aquinas here, I'm talking about his philosophy, not his uh, theology. I know the brothers of St. Jean, the uh, French foundation. They uh, usually uh, teach um, uh, this type of philosophy. You have different Dominican places. 
uh, where they teach Thomas Aquinas philosophy. So you're bound to find sooner or later somebody who, who I would say, and forgive me the, um, the, the expression, somebody who sees philosophically, who sees the, 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 the uh, bee. What can one read? I know a book, uh, it's written in French. I don't know the quality of the translation. But it's written by Jacques Maritain, the French uh, Catholic uh, philosopher. And uh, it's uh, seven, le seven lessons on the being. Um, I can maybe try to find it and put the link um, uh, under this video. Uh, I remember till today that I don't remember if it is the third or the fourth lesson. Um, it's like, wow. Um, so it's a book, you read it. Um, and I think he, he um, in this chapter, uh, is or lesson because there are seven lessons on on, on being. Uh, I have it in French, so I, there's no no use at all to show it to you right now. But I'll try my best at least to give one or two links under the video uh, at the end. I, I remember till today the lesson, splendid, splendid, where he describes the experience. Um, so I think it's both sides. Studying on one hand, one can read. And I'm talking about Maritain here. Maritain can uh, can help uh, in this book. So it's not a big book. And uh, also meeting people. Um, Dominicans usually are uh, supposed to. They do. This is their mission in in, in the church. Uh, but also uh, the brothers of Saint Jean. Uh, there are some institutes. I know one or of these institutes in the south of France, but this is for the French-speaking people. Um, I'm sure in the United States uh, you have uh, such people who teach um, this uh, type of um, philosophy and uh, and way. There is a book I think written by Father Marie Dominique Philippe. One can read some um, books. It's difficult if you read directly Thomas Aquinas and his works in philosophy. I'm not sure one will perceive the core of what I'm trying to say. These are there are two courses essentially. Uh, one explains uh, the being, and one explains the operation of the mind. These two courses complement each other. They go together. Usually, in a classic, old-fashioned classic. Um, teaching of, of philosophy, very, I think, very rare today, but uh, yeah, maybe some faculties in Rome continue to do that, I guess, I guess they do. So yeah, these two courses, uh, if you study metaphysics, and if you study the theory of, of uh, knowledge, uh, uh, if you do these courses, I think, if it, they are done properly, then something should occur uh, in you and you could start to, to see. But I think also there are some books from Jacques Maritain where he addresses, underlines the issue, this uh, big problematic um, uh, point in, in philosophy, how all modern philosophies are influenced by um, Immanuel Kant's vision and understanding of, um, of how the mind works. Um, if I have such thing, I will I will put the link also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your for your your, your question.